And here's a list of all the tools that are needed. You're going to need a half inch drive for the tensioner. You're going to need two 15 millimeter wrenches. You're going to need a quarter inch drive with a 5 16 socket. And you're going to need two screwdrivers, either flat or Phillips. You're going to take your half inch drive, find the belt tensioner. You're going to insert it into the belt tensioner. And then you're going to pull it towards the driver's side. And that will release it. And that's how you're going to loosen up the belt. Here you're gonna see, we've already loosened these. We use the two 15 millimeter wrenches to hold this side and to loosen this side. You pull them all the way back until the nylox is removed and then you can spin these off. Back here, you have a 15 16 that you can attach right onto here. And you will loosen that up. As soon as they get loose, you can spin them out. Be careful not to lose them. Be sure you do this when it's not hot. And then after you pull it off, we'll get to the impeller. Now with the cover removed, you can see the impeller just fine. What we're gonna do is you're going to remove the clamp here and also the clamp, which is already moved. And also you're going to loosen the clamp here. Now with that same 5 16 you're going to loosen this clamp. After you get them loose, you'll be able to remove the hose. And you'll be able to observe down. You can see there's a broken piece of impeller already down there. This is what we need to get out of there. And this is the heat exchanger which takes the coolant and cools the coolant with the fresh water from outside. Also remove the hose from this side. Now, if you remove it out of the way, be careful don't, not to drop your clamps, move it out of the way, it makes it easier to move the pump back. Now that we have everything removed, we have easy access to this. We're going to pull the pump back so you can get the angle that you need in order to fit the screwdrivers in to pry out the old impeller. Now, if yours is burnt completely, this will come out a lot easier because all the fins will be gone. And as soon as you get it out to a certain amount, you will be able to grab it and pull it out. There it is. So now you have your impeller out. You can see there's where one of the missing fins are, the one that we've seen down in the cooler. And if you've burnt one of these things, you'll see it burnt all the way through. You can, you'll notice that there is some wear marks on this impeller. Then you're gonna look inside of here. You're gonna make sure that the keyway is in place and that the inside of the impeller housing doesn't have any type of debris or extra pieces in there. These are the tools you're going to need to access the cooler. You're going to pull the cover off the cooler and get the pieces of impeller out. You have a 10 millimeter 
wrench, a 10 millimeter socket, an extension, a 13 millimeter socket, and a ratchet. We use an electric ratchet to make it things easier here, but you can use a standard ratchet for it. You see we have three screws here. We're going to loosen up this screw right here which is right next to the pump. You're gonna loosen the 10 millimeter with the socket on top and the 10 millimeter wrench on the bottom. Be careful not to lose the, the nut or there's also a lock washer on the bottom. So be careful not to drop that down in there. Now that we've removed that nut, we're going to come down to these 13 millimeters down here and we're going to loosen up those 13 millimeters and then we can pull the ECM back. So we've already pre-loosened them. Take them off. set them to the side. Usually what we like to do is put them in the cup holder so that way they don't get dropped or lost. And then you're going to pull up the ECM and you'll notice that the wiring harness is next to a pin. You pull it up and over that pin and then you have full access to your cover. Now for the cover. On this cover you have four 13 millimeter uh, bolts that are in it and then these bolts are also thread locked with blue Loctite so they're going to seem like they're very hard to pull out. So go ahead and pull them out. It's going to take you a little bit of time because of the size of them. As soon as you get them all out, you see this is the size of them. You see the blue thread locker on there. You remove all four of the bolts. After the bolts are removed, what you're going to do is you're going to want to try and wiggle this thing and try and it's held in by a gasket, which is down there in the bottom. And you can see the pieces of impeller inside of there. So I'll put the plastic case up out of the way for right now. Go ahead and clean any debris out of here. And a lot of times what will end up happening is you'll get a gasket that will be poked out like this. So in order to get that back in place, what you're going to do is you're going to kind of push and maneuver it so it kind of takes up the slack all throughout it. There you go. And then you want the gasket like that, nice and flat, all the way around up against the outside. Okay, now we're gonna reinstall the cover. Make sure the cover is clear of all debris. This is basically a grease that helps it slide in. You see it's actually got a taper on it to push up against the gasket. And we just need to make sure it is oriented the way it came off, which is this way. And you can push it down just a little bit and then start the screws in after you get the screws in then you're going to bring it down slowly in an x pattern in order to push it down correctly all right now we're going to take the 13 millimeter start snugging it up in an x pattern they'll go down a little bit before they start getting difficult again because they have loctite on them And what we're trying to do is close this gap up. Okay, before we install this impeller, we're gonna wanna put the keyway to the straight up position, just so that way you know where it's at. So it's forced, it's facing right towards you. Okay, when you're pushing this thing on, sometimes the keyway on the inside of there is popping up a little bit and not, it won't allow it to go on. So what you'll have to do is you'll have to squeeze the keyway. So look at the diagram that I'm writing right after this. Now after you get the impeller back in, you can go ahead and reassemble the housing. You're gonna get a new O-ring that comes with the housing. For this you'll have to be careful that it fits in to the O-ring groove. So as soon as you get the O-ring groove on, Make sure it's not sticking out at any place because you don't want it to leak. And then you're going to install the cover. Now the cover only fits one way. If you've seen it when it comes off, you'll see that there's a sticker on there. This is the way that it's supposed to go on. So then you're going to put all the screws on by hand to make sure it's nice and level. And we're gonna try and close that gap again. You can see the impeller sticking out just a little bit as soon as we start in an X pattern. 
it will start to close that gap. We're using a ratcheting open end wrench on the other side to make this job a lot quicker. But you need to lock the nylocks. Sometimes the paint will be difficult. <laughs> okay, is this different? You're going to route through this little hole right here. Be sure that this is all the way up and this clamp is actually on the clamp is actually on the pump you feel the hard pump on the outside of it this is soft over here so this clamp needs to move right there and then you're going to use your 5 16 to tighten that up be sure that the hose is on both ends before you tighten them up just so it's clocked the right way as it goes around this side over here. All right, here is the way that the belt routing goes. It goes down, be sure that it is in the ribs on both sides, wraps around that pump and then goes around your wall water pump and that all the ribs are in place, goes around the tensioner or the uh, idler and then goes up onto the alternator, which is where we're gonna pull it on. And there's your tensioner and you'll see he's going to actuate the tensioner. Go ahead. Actuate the tensioner and then put the pulley or the uh, belt onto the pulley let it loose and make sure that it's all into the grooves. Okay, your last step is going to be add coolant into your coolant reservoir. If the boat is overheated and actually spilt coolant out like this one apparently did, you're gonna wanna make sure that the engine has the correct amount of coolant which should be right about right here. You can see there's a little bit down on the bottom, but we need to top this thing off. Now, this is an in-depth way to change this. Um, there is an easier way. If you do blow an impeller up, they do tend to come out, so you won't have to take off uh, the pump itself and release it. When you are changing it and it still has good impellers inside of it, you're gonna probably wanna take the pump off. It does make it a lot easier. Um, I know it was intended not to be pulled off, but you're gonna wanna pull it off because it makes it extremely easier to pull it off. You see how we had to take those two screwdrivers? Um, if you look at the way it's set up, with those two screwdrivers to try and pull this thing would be very, very difficult to do. So when you're doing it the other way, like if uh, you just blew an impeller completely and it's actually completely shredded out, then you do not have to remove these in order to pull this thing off. And you also don't have to remove this here. Um, you still want to go back over here. You want to remove this hose over here and look down there and get all the impeller pieces out. And you'll probably have to clean the trans cooler. I mean, the, I'm sorry, not the trans. You'll probably want to still pull this off here if you... Uh, have extra pieces which are all out of that bad impeller. They're going to be down in there. So you're going to want to still pull off the heat exchanger cap and check in there and get the pieces out of it. Um, the nice thing is, is if 
you can leave it in. It saves you a whole bunch of time because you don't have to pull the belt loose or anything like that. So you'll pull these off. You'll pull that impeller out of there. Just kind of wiggle it out because it won't have anything holding it in. And then you just have to check down in there, see which way the keyway is, and then line the impeller up to it and pull it in. Now, after you're done with all this stuff, you're going to want to take the boat back to the dealership. It's unfortunately going to have a beep, which is telling you that the engine is overheated. It's going to say service required on it. Um, my suggestion would be to call the dealership up and ask them um, if this is okay. They're going to ask you to look for different uh, numbers down to make sure that it's only overheating that has caused this problem and you're not having any other issues. If the boat's not pulling throttle away from you, then you should be good to go. It's just going to keep telling you service required and tell you that it overheated at one time. Once again, this is Brian with Wake Tech Marine with an in-depth look on how to change an impeller on an M5, M6 Malibu motor 2019 to 21. Thanks.